All right, welcome back. Uh, in this lecture, we're going to talk about inner functions and uh, their importance and some of their uses and uh, some of the caveats about using them. So we're going to do the same thing uh, here. We're going to add another script file, add below, add new item, script file, and we're just going to call this inner functions. So here's our script file. So inner functions are a, uh, a F sharp's ability to allow nested functions uh, within a function. Uh, and that has a great many uses and uh, we have to be careful with them a little bit and we'll talk about that shortly. But basically F sharp allows functions to contain other functions within them. Uh, they have access to all of the arguments above them in scope. So if we look at this function here, top level function takes an x, y, inner function takes a z. This inner function has access to x, y, uh, and its own z. Another inner function, however, if we had, had another one below that, like let inner2... Uh, w equal this could do x plus y plus w but it could not access z and we'll see that here so this z is not within its scope it's in the scope of this inner function it's not within the scope of this inner function so it can't access the z within that inner function so we'll uh, we'll take that out we'll run this into the uh, interactive and there it is it says it takes an int and another int that's our x and our y and it returns a function that takes an int and returns an int and that's what this inner call here does is that's the return value that is this function it's returning it and that allows us to do things like this we call int one two or uh, top top level function one two three and it adds them all together and creates a six. So top level function returns this inner function, which takes a uh, an int to an int, but we have to pass in these two values. So when we pass in these two values, if we were to just pass in the two values, we would get back a function. So we could say something like let add uh, one and two equal and so this is a function that takes an int and if we then say add one and two to a three we get six so that's how uh, inner functions work basically now we have to be careful we can nest functions arbitrarily deep and I'll show you that and it can get hard to reason about so we want to be careful with how deep we nest them so for instance this is fairly simple to, to understand, but it looks kind of ugly, right? Uh, this could have been written as uh, A, B, C, D right on the line in a single function doing it. But this does, in fact, work. We push, put this in, and you see it takes an int, and it returns a function that takes an int, an int, and an int, and returns an int. Um, if we were, these inner functions do the same thing in a similar pattern until they get down. And this, in fact, does work. It returns a 10 when we add those numbers together. But this arbitrary uh, uh, nesting uh, gets difficult to reason about. And if we've got more complexity going in here with functions, within functions, within functions, it can be very hard to understand. So it's best to try to flatten things out and break things down and keep things on, on, a, uh, on a level. But inner functions are very, very useful for a number of things. In fact, one of the most uh, important things that inner functions are good for is uh, in using with uh, uh, continuations. So a continuation is a way of telling a function, uh, you shouldn't know how to handle this condition. You're going to delegate that back to me. I'm going to give you the function I want you to call under certain conditions, and that's called a continuation. And that function then should call that function that you pass in to handle whatever the situation is. And we're going to show an example of that right now. 
Uh, and the first thing we're going to talk about real quickly is another type. I'm going to introduce another type here. Um, we've seen uh, we've seen some use of these. Uh, these are called discriminated unions. A discriminated union, in fact, I named that wrong. Let's fix that. Um, so a discriminated union can take on one of several types, whatever types you put down here. And this looks very much like pattern matching. Uh, it is somewhat related to it, but really this means or. Uh, it A tripartite result can be either a success or a failure. It can't be both or something else or, or anything. It, it can only be one of those two, and it's guaranteed to be one of those two. And we're going to use this, and what this says is, that when triparse uh, int result value comes back as a success, it carries with it an int64 value. When it comes back as a failure, it carries with it a string. And this allows us the ability to have a function that returns more than one type, uh, which is a really interesting construct. So let's take a look at a function, and this function is going to use continuations and we're going to use it uh, then with inner functions to fulfill these uh, these continuation functions. So this says let try parse int. So we're going to do something that that requires or could throw an exception. And and really this is kind of an introduction also to the idea of exception handling and how we can convert exceptions into something that's truly functional and doesn't happen uh, as a side effect outside of our normal uh, control flow. We're going to pass in a success function and a failure function and some string that should contain an integer value. But as we all know, it may not. Somebody may type something wrong and put something in there that can't be parsed, which is why our system.int64 tripart or parse function can throw an exception. It will throw an exception if the string is invalid in some way. So uh, the try block with F sharp goes like this. It says try and then with, and we have a pattern matching again. And as long as it's a, uh, in this case, it's any exception, we can also uh, restrict this to specific exceptions, and we'll do that uh, in future lessons. Uh, in the case of it working, it's, it's going to call success func, this function right here, and pass it the parsed string. If this, uh, if this succeeds, success func will be called, and it will return the result of success func. If it fails uh, with an exception, then the exception will be caught here. It will call fail func, pass in the exception string, and it'll return the, the value of fail func. Now this function right here is generic. It doesn't care what the return values are. It does care that, it, that success func must take the int64 and fail func must take a string. So those are our two requirements. But the success func and fail func can return any type, but they must return the same type because triparsint returns both either of those. And so we can only return one type from a function. And that's where this discriminated union up here comes in because it is a single type. Even though we have two types in here, success and failure, we can return either of those and it's still a triparsint result. It still meets A. In some ways, it's like the object-oriented idea of success and failure are, are related to this in, in some way. <clears throat> so let's look how we use this. Uh, we use it with inner functions in this case, though we don't have to. They could be, they could be uh, standalone functions themselves. But this is about inner functions, so I'm demonstrating the use of this triparse int function with uh, continuation functions. So we'll call this let use try parse. So this is going to be the function that's actually going to use it. And it just takes some string that represents an integer. And we have two inner functions, success func with an x that needs to be our, when it's called by this success func, uh, this is going to be an, excuse me, this is going to be an int 64, this x, because that's what success func uh, 
wants to see in it. And it's going to take that int64 and pass it to the success constructor. This up here is a type, and this down here is a constructor. And we'll talk about that in more detail when we go over discriminated unions in the next section. But basically, this says create a type called success, which is related to this triparsint result with an X. And remember, this pipe symbol is the forward pipe symbol. It just puts this X over here. Failure func, when it gets an exception, in this case, it's a string. We can see that right here. It's a string. This exception gets passed into this failure, and that's a string. And so this function uh, passes these two success func, failure func, to try parse int, and it does that right here. It calls try parse int, passes this success function, this failure function, and our int string that we're passing in. Let's take a look at that function signature. The value of function success is not defined. Oh, because I probably didn't put this in the in interpreter. There it is. Now we'll run this in. Yep, that's fine. And now we'll try this. Okay. So now this takes in an int string, but look what it returns. <clears throat> this function is no longer generic. It's taken this and turned it into requiring it return a triparse int result, which it does, <clears throat> because both of these success and failure functions return that type. <clears throat> now let's try to parse something. <clears throat> and I've got one right here. <clears throat> let's paste it in. Use triparse with 325 should be successful. And there it is. And what we get back is not just 325. We get back a success, 325. So we get our value. And we're going to talk about in, uh, in future sections how we use pattern matching to get a hold of that value. But we can very easily get this value out of this success type. This is like a wrapper that holds that value. And we know it was successful because it came back as a success type. If we do this same thing, but we pass in something wrong about that, a typographical error, now this time we get a failure. Now it looks like an exception, but we didn't actually throw an exception back to the system. We threw an exception right here in try. This threw an exception, but it was caught right here and it passed that exception as a string to failure function. Failure function here is the function we passed in, and it takes that string and passes it to the failure type of this triparse int result type. That, uh, that then displayed as failure and the exception result. We can pattern match on those two, success and failure, and make a determination as to whether the function that we called was a success or a failure. And this means that we're not throwing exceptions because when we call this, we're not throwing exceptions. Now there's one other way we can do this. Uh, here I went ahead and passed in the string, but remember about partial application. I've put the success func and the failure func first and I put the string last because it's very likely we're gonna wanna partially apply these two and we can do that like this and we'll uh, let me move down here and get this this function I called apply try parse and it has the same two success and failure functions that that uh, uh, map the result to these success and failure functions but I did not pass in anything to it. There's, there's no arguments passed to it because I'm just returning a partially applied function. And if we look at that function signature, we'll see that it's the same exact. Here, we've got use try parse, takes an int, uh, a value called int string. It's of type string and it returns a try parse int result. This re returns exactly the same signature. This is a partially applied function, whereas this is, is not a partially applied function. That's the only difference, but they work exactly the same way. So what we've done here is taken triparseint and said, hey, here's my two functions. We now have a, a function called apply triparse that uses this same function 
and we can pass a value into it. So let's try that with this. Here's apply try parse. And we get success 325 if we put something bogus in it, like that. And now we get an exception. It's in the incorrect format. So that's what inner functions really are all about, a little bit of why they're used and, and how they can be important. Uh, what we covered was uh, the idea of a top-level function. This is your, your outer function that contains other functions that can be called directly. Uh, inner functions cannot be called from outside their function. They're scoped within the function. The inner function has access to the scoped variables outside of its scope that are its parent and above. So like this inner function here, add3d, has access to c, which, which is above it. It has access to B, which is also above it, and access to A. Another function in here would not have access to the values within this function, only parents and grandparents and great-grandparents. <clears throat> um, we talked about discriminated unions. Discriminated unions are types that can be of one or more type. Uh, and they can contain payloads with them, information that, that transmits along. Uh, and they can only be one of these types, and they must be one of these types. So we can always guarantee that we get one of these types back. Uh, we talked a little bit about uh, try with. We'll use this more uh, later, and we'll even do some limiting of what exception we want to trap. Here I'm just trapping any exception that occurs. Um, we talked about the use of inner functions as continuations and the importance of continuations. Continuations allow us to move behavior out of the function that we're, that we're creating here and into the caller so that the caller can decide what the behavior of this function is. For instance, if we wanted, instead of to use this success failure, if we wanted to just print a log statement in the case of failure, or in the case of success, maybe call some other function, we could do that. And there's ways we could, we could arrange this any way we want. We can decide how this function behaves upon success and upon failure, which is a very powerful tool. And finally, we showed again another demonstration of partial application by simply partially applying that function with our success and failure function and getting back a function that takes this int string and uses it. So that's the end of this lecture. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. And uh, I'll see you in the next lecture.